everyone, welcome to Indigo Conference interview series from Hustle to Enterprise. I'm your host, Brittany Brown, and with us today is a multifaceted woman who many of us know from popular entertainment program, Intense. The Intense 5 generated quite a lot of buzz last week. Wonder if it will do the same this week. But behind the scenes, mm -hmm. she is a wirebender, makeup artist, visual artist, YouTuber, well, <laughs> recently a YouTuber. Yeah. Did I miss anything? Um, no, I think that's everything. <laughs> well, props, I do props as well, and carpentry. Yes, prop artisan. Mm -hmm. Let us welcome Ashley Miller. What's up? Thanks for having me. <laughs> How are you? I'm all right. Good to be here. No, it's kind of in the reverse for this series. Huh. You know, you're usually the one interviewing mm -hmm. persons, but today you're in the hot seat. How's that for you? <laughs> um, well, you know, I'm trying to come out of my comfort zone and being more of a talker so i am a little bit uncomfortable <laughs> but you know we're going to just roll with it yes and we're just going to do this thing you know just do the do exactly now many of us may not know but you actually went to utec and mm -hmm. you studied analytical chemistry yes because you wanted to be a pharmacist mm -hmm. but then you pursued communication studies after yeah how was that transition for you all right so I ended up doing chemistry first because in high school I was really good at chemistry so you know they just said go and be a pharmacist <laughs> yeah. I was like alright cool, no problem. Um, when I got to university it kind of opened my eyes up to other things that I could have gotten myself involved with you know so chemistry started to make me a little bit miserable and then I started to weigh my options and say you know there's something else out there for me other than sitting in a lab and mixing chemicals yeah. so I just made the switch to communication arts and I thrive <laughs> in that in that um, field. Would you say that being the host of Intense kind of influenced that decision? Um, yes, I would say so, but not because of the journalism aspect, more so the production aspect of mm -hmm. being around um, the camera crew, being around the control room. Um, I just wanted to get more insight into those aspects, directing, producing, stuff like that, not necessarily the journalism aspect of it, but yes, yes. I think Intense did have some influence on that. Okay, mm -hmm. That's, that sounds good. So safe to say that everyone who goes to Arden mm. <laughs> <laughs> becomes something big in the creative industry because we think about coffee, mm -hmm. we think about alkaline, we think about Donwell, mm -hmm. and so many, so many more, and yourself. Yes. So what, what are you, what's your take on that? All right. So you know, first of all, we definitely have to big up Yannick as well, the therapist. <laughs> he's a big bad phot photographer, and he's also making his way in the directing um, industry as well. And I have to big up that photogra photography because. They're also Ardenites and JLL Productions also an Ardenite. Um, it's weird because Arden doesn't necessarily facilitate creativity like that. Arden is more academics, books, 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 study, study, study. Um, teacher, lawyer, doctor, those kind of vibes, you know, that's, that's kind of what Arden kind of pushes. So for so many creative persons to come out of that school, I always found it a little bit strange, but I feel like, you know, maybe it's because it was kind of suppressed yeah. While we were in high school, we got the chance to just let it all out yeah. when we came out of the school. So I think maybe that, that could be it or, you know, the talent was just always there. We just never had a way to express it. And then when we express it, we'll come out with a bang. So you mentioned high school and that you weren't necessarily able to express yourself mm -hmm. so much. So do you think Ashley at Arden is different from Ashley today? Oh, for sure. <laughs> for sure, for sure, for sure. How so? Um, I guess the only real creative expression I would have had at Arden was... Probably dance club, but I don't know. Dance um, as well? Yeah. Actually, I can't keep up. <laughs> no, you're going to have to talk to us about dance. Yeah. So you did dance. I believe you did ballet mm -hmm. for most of your life. Yeah. And you actually trained, with, pro trained professionally for yeah. dance. Speak a little bit on that. So I was in the dance club at Arden Dance and Salsa. Um, for my little tiny top life, I was doing ballet. And then I transitioned into more modern contemporary. I went to Edna Manley Junior School. And then from there, I got scouted by the National Dance Theatre Company to dance with them. Mm -hmm. And I guess that's where I got more professional training from NDTC. Um, I did a couple seasons with them. Um, and then I just got bored. <laughs> <laughs> so the passion, I wouldn't say the passion went away. It was just, I, I just wanted to change seasons. It's a different time for me. Dance was a heavy part in my life back then. But then as I grew older, it kind of just 
I guess a part of me just didn't really want to pursue it as hard as I thought I did. So I kind of just put it down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned changing seasons. And mm -hmm. evidently, you, you don't fear change. Not necessarily. I mean, no. in your sense of style, we knew Ashley in 2012, for mm -hmm. instance, with nice curly hair. <laughs> I mean, your hair is still lovely now. Yeah. But now you're bald. Mm -hmm. Your sense of style always changes. Mm -hmm. You don't seem to, you know, fear anything. But has there any been any major challenge in your life where, you know, it was a bit hard for you, and how did you how did you get out of that? All right. So, any major challenge? I wouldn't say that I've had a major challenge. Um, the probably the only challenge that I have is everything that's internal. Mm -hmm. I overanalyze things so much that I talk myself out of things. So I guess that is a challenge that I had. Um, I've always had this kind of tomboyish style in me. I was just always afraid to do it because you know Jamaica is not really a society that's kind of accepting of a tomboy girl, yeah. <laughs> right? Um, or this kind of fashion. But as the times change and things are getting, you know, more people are getting more open-minded. I see a lot more girls dressing sneakers, you know, baggy pants, That's true. you know, big T-shirts. Um, I don't necessarily think they're like challenge. Not necessarily sure if I would think of a challenge. I guess trying to pursue a creative career would be somewhat of a challenge to me. Um, just I guess with the atmosphere of Jamaica, we don't really. We're more accepting of creativity now, but back then it's like, how are you going to be an artist? That's not a real job. You get what I mean? How are you going to be a dancer? That's not a real job. Mm -hmm. So that's probably maybe the major challenge that I would have faced trying to pursue a creative career because if that wasn't the case, I'm sure I would have been doing this mm -hmm. from probably as I left high school. And you mentioned, you mentioned challenges in Jamaica, mm -hmm. but yet still you stood up and you said, I'm going to do this. Yeah. I'm going to do all that I want to do. Mm -hmm. So who influenced Ashley to be who she is today? Um, who influenced me to be who I am? I influenced me to be who I am, to be That's honest. Right. I just said, you know what, girl? It's like, forget what everybody else would think or forget what society has to say about it. Just do you, just be true to who you are. And I think me now, 28, I am very true to myself. And back in the day, I wasn't really living as true to myself as I am now. And I'm just grateful for the place that I am in now. And I'm 100% happy. Yeah. with where I am now and you know what I stand for um, I just believe in I don't need to conform to the mold that I was grown up in like mm -hmm. society is one way but if I want to be another way as I'm as long as I'm not hurting anyone or hurting <laughs> myself I don't see anything wrong with it so what does it mean to reinvent yourself because seeing Ashley all the time is a different Ashley yes. and you have a YouTube, you started a YouTube channel two weeks ago so mm -hmm. I don't know maybe I see Ashley next week she's gonna be like I am doing something totally different you know mm -hmm. what is it like to reinvent yourself all the time um reinvention it does have a lot to do with the fact that I just can't settle I always feel like there is a better version of me that can come out of me living my life mm -hmm. I'm only 28 which I think is a very young age mm -hmm. I have a lot more to experience um, if I stay one way for the rest of my life, I feel like I would close myself off to other opportunities that I would be able to experience. So tomorrow, maybe I'll wake up and I'll be blonde. That's yeah. another reinvention, you know. This part of my life is blonde Ashley or, you know, pink hair Ashley yeah. or I change back my style and I go back to wearing dresses or I decide to take up another hobby which, you know, could be glass making. Mm -hmm. You know, it, 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 I just feel like reinvention just comes with Ex comes with wanting to experience new things. Yeah. Um, I just can't stay the same. That's mm -hmm. just that's just what it is for me. I cannot stay the same. So, what's your take on even collaborating? Because you're at this stage in your business now where you're well known. Mm -hmm. People love what you do. Mm -hmm. Who in Jamaica, and not even just Jamaica, internationally, would you want to collaborate with for your business? Who would I want to collaborate? All right. So we have a lot of businesses. <laughs> <laughs> so are we going to pick a specific one? In the well, in the creative industry, as it relates to well, we have Carnival coming up. Okay. You're into wire bending. Yes. Who exactly would you want to partner with? Who would I want to partner with? Um, 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 one designer that I that I'm really really inspired by. She's in Trinidad. Her name is Ginger Wirebras. I'm not sure of her real name, but that's her name on Instagram. And I've always loved her work. We hope you're watching this. Hope <laughs> <laughs> you watching. I've always loved her work, and I would actually be inspired to work with her. There's also Elwin, who is in Trinidad. He is like. Like, that man is goals. He makes amazing props um, for Private Ryan's party, his breakfast party. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you see, like, the cherry blossom trees yeah. and the blooms and stuff that he makes. He's amazing at that. He makes a lot of the 
wire work for the costumes as well. So I really feel like he would be somebody that I definitely, definitely 100% would want to collaborate with with regards to Carnival. And you're going to get that collaboration because <laughs> you are Ashley Miller and you just get everything that you well, want. I mean, if you have a move to Trinidad for a couple of months, you know, I'm definitely down. <laughs> and you say move, like, are you willing to take that step of just course. to advance your business? Of course, I definitely am. Um, once I am comfortable enough to do it, and nothing can stop me from doing it. I'm definitely doing yeah. it. So obviously you are a risk taker, but what would you say to persons, especially now during COVID, mm -hmm. you have an idea, but you're a bit fearful to step out there because one, you don't know if, you don't know what the rest of 2020 may bring. Yeah, yeah. So what, what, what words of encouragement would you have for them? All right, well, you see, like you said, you don't know what the rest of 2020 will bring, so why not just do it? Just do it. Yeah, <laughs> just, just do it. You don't have anything to lose. Um, in one of my YouTube videos, I kind of spoke on this. There's really nothing you have to lose but time. And right now, with COVID times, you have a lot of time right now. Yeah. You know, people are more work, working from home and stuff. I think it's easier to schedule a time for you to do something that you think that you would never be able to do or want to do that you never thought you would be able to do. Just do it. Yeah. Right, that, that's, that's, that's the only advice I can give. <laughs> Just do it. <laughs> okay, now we spoke a bit on being a visual artist. Mm -hmm. um, what would you say is your most interesting creative piece and why? Mm. Um, I would have to say the very first piece that I actually posted on um, Instagram, it was like a sculpture piece and it was a person with a tree coming out of their head. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think to, up to this date, I don't know how I'm going to top that piece because I think uh, as soon as I posted it, it sold. It sold. Yeah, so I don't know how I'm going to top that piece, but to this day, it's still my favorite and still the most inspiring one for me. For you. Yeah. Now, in terms of art, what does it really do for you? Because you have a lot of persons, you know, art for them is their expression and their outlets. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what exactly do you get from doing art? Um, all right, so the whole art thing really started because I wanted a hobby. And generally, whenever I start a hobby, it turns into a business. So I really wanted something that would just stay a hobby, but <laughs> it, it didn't. It didn't. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't. The reception that I got was too great, and you know, a person started to you know kind of inquire and ask, oh, you know, how much is this? Whatever, yeah. can you do this and that? And started doing more commission pieces, but mm -hmm. it really was generated out of the need for a hobby. So. I really still need to find So from a hobby to a real deal yeah. business. Now, being a creative, especially being self-taught in Jamaica, a lot of persons want to start off, you know, just doing work for persons mm -hmm. to kind of build awareness. So they will do a lot of pro bono work. Mm -hmm. What's your thoughts about that, especially in Jamaica? All right, so it's, it's, it's a touchy, kind of touchy-ish topic, especially with creative doing um, free work. I personally don't see anything wrong with it as long as you have something to gain or you see that you will gain something in the end. I wouldn't just say just do this thing for free and you just give it to the person and you don't get anything out mm -hmm. of it. You guys, I mean, you always have to get something out of it. Um, I mean, you know, people do things out of the kindness of their hearts and there's nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with that. But even if it's like, <laughs> we don't like to use this word a lot, but exposure. <laughs> even if you want to get a little bit of exposure, but like I said, it, it all depends on you and what you're trying to build with your business. Um, it's not every pan when not, or every person when asked for free work, you go take it, you guys have yeah. me. But it just all depends on how you want to align your business. I don't see anything wrong with it. True. And in starting your business, because as you said, it was a hobby at first, mm -hmm. you know, how was it for you in understanding your value and how to even charge persons? Um, I don't think I still understand it, to be <laughs> honest. <laughs> That's still um, one of the hardest things for me is just, yes, like you said, knowing the value of my work. I know the value, but is somebody else going to really look at it and I'm say, so oh, yeah, man, this, this definitely costs this amount or whatever. Um, I got a lot of um, feedback from some of my artist friends and they helped me a little bit in terms of the pricing because one I did put out a piece and them said no man that is too cheap you need to go higher so I'm like you're sure and them say yeah I said I don't want to run with the people you know them said no man girl you have to know the value of your work you have to go higher with it so yeah. it's still something that I'm working on um, I do see the value in my work but I try to price it in a way where people will also see the value and say yes I'll be willing to spend that amount That's on enough. yeah now, how do you really say no to a client who, you know, is just not the right fit? Like, mm -hmm. you know, they, they come to you, but, you know, they're just too confusing of a client and it's just not easy to deal with. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I can know from jump when somebody is going to be a little bit difficult. Um, the easiest way for me to kind of 
<laughs> Alright, I have a girl on way and I have a, I have a, I'm sorry I won't be able to work with you way. So my girl on way is usually, oh, I won't be able to get the supplies in time to get this done. This time, yeah. <laughs> or I would just straight up say, um, maybe I'm not the person that you should be working with. Um, may, and then I'll refer them to somebody else, like somebody I know that's in that field as well. I'll probably refer them to that person because you do have persons that are a little bit difficult and um, people think, well, for art especially, art for me is not a supply and demand kind of business. It's a, uh, I paint on my mood and um, I, yeah, like I paint on my mood. So if I am not necessarily in a mood right now, I'll tell the client, okay, you won't be able to get this piece um, until like two to three weeks from now. And if they have an issue with that, then I'll just refer them to somebody else. I don't necessarily feel like I should break my peace of mind just to please them. Um, but yeah, that's, that's kind of how I ease them off. Just say, okay, well, you know, I won't be able to get that done at this time. Maybe you can try this person or materials not going to come into it. <laughs> try, try, try somewhere else. <laughs> but most of your work, if anyone wants to like keep up with you, it's mm -hmm. totally through social media. Through social media. You yeah. know, um, what do you say, you know, the impact of social media on your business has been mm -hmm. during this time, especially? All right. So right now, I think it's the best time to have online businesses. Um, you don't necessarily want a lot of traffic coming through a store because you know COVID times and social distancing and gathering of crowds <laughs> and stuff like that. So I think right now is the best time to establish a space for yourself online. Mm -hmm. No, and I feel like you get more traffic and you get more um, inquiries and business um, questions on online than if I was to have a storefront. Mm -hmm. So I think now is the perfect time for all my businesses to be on <laughs> social media. So. <laughs> So it would actually expand to having a store one of these days, just so everything, because you're a makeup artist, a, a visual artist, mm -hmm. you do props, mm -hmm. would you consider doing a store one day, just having everything there accessible um, to everyone? Not necessarily, no. The most I would do is probably like pop-ups, like gallery pop-ups, stuff like that, but I, would, I don't think I would ever have a storefront. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. Now, during the pandemic, with Carnival coming up, mm -hmm. you have your wire bending business. Mm -hmm. Have you experienced any loss as it relates to that? And you know, what are you know, thinking of doing to deal with that since Carnival may not happen? Um, loss for sure, because everybody's so uncertain about what is happening and um, what would I do? What would I do? Hmm. <laughs> I mean, if Carnival is happening, you know, I'm sure people are gonna come to me for items and stuff, so that would be a plus. But if it's not happening, then of course I would experience a loss because nobody would really want to necessarily buy anything. But mm -hmm. um, the wire brows are not only for Carnival. I do them mm -hmm. for maternity shoots as well. <laughs> people do them for birthday shoots. Um, so it's now especially is a good time because I've been doing a lot of wire brows for maternity shoots and crowns for maternity shoots as well. So they're not limited to Carnival only. Mm -hmm. So I'm not... I'm not making as much as I would have if Carnival were to happen, but there's still some business being generated through there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned that, you know, your pieces are not only for Carnival, but for different things. Mm -hmm. You know, how important is it in a business to know that, you know, if anything happens, you have a plan B? Yeah, man. So um, it's very important to be diverse in your business. It's, I guess it's a little bit hard if, you're, if what you're selling or what you're pushing is something is specific to something. Um, but it's easy for me because I wear them out like to parties, breakfast parties, <laughs> stuff like that, beach parties. So um, when I post my pictures, people are always interested, but you know, no events are really happening yeah. now. But what I do is the persons that do their maternity shoots, I just ask them for pictures and, you know, I just post them to social media so persons can, you know, be aware that I'm still there, I'm still open for business, you know. If you're a little extra mommy to be, right, you can get a little wire bra for your little maternity shoot and, you know, up your thing. Yes. So now, speaking of inspiration now, mm -hmm. if you could change society with your business, mm -hmm. what would you do and if why? I could change. <clears throat> um... <laughs> It's a very tough question. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. How would I change society with my business? I would just try to get people more appreciative of creatives and just creative art, visual artists, um, production, any mm -hmm. kind of creative industry. I just try to get people to be more interested and, and just see the value more in this yes. kind of thing. You get what I mean? Because I feel like 
this society we don't really see the value in it it's like oh you know if i want something to film just come with your camera and that's it no yeah. it doesn't really work that way <laughs> if you want a quality production it takes people it takes yeah. equipment you know it takes time um i guess just to have people more like i said just more appreciative of the creative industry and what we have to offer mm -hmm. and you speak of you know persons being very critical mm -hmm. especially in jamaica what makes ashley continue to get up every day and do what she has to do just me and what I know that I want to achieve for myself. Um, that is what makes me get up and do what I have to do. I just know that I have something I want to achieve and I'm going to get up and do it. And would you say you have any other things that you're going to accomplish now or you're sticking to these areas I'm for now? Definitely not sticking to this. Um, there's more. I don't know what it is yet. I might just wake up tomorrow and see something on YouTube and say, hey, man, I'm going to try that. Yeah. And, you know, it just turns into something. But definitely, this, this is not the end of what I will do or what I can do. But what I'm just going to try and do so I don't have to create another Instagram page for something else <laughs> is tie it into the ones that I already oh, yeah, have existed. already have, mm -hmm. yes. So everyone knows that, you know, success requires a lot of hard work. Mm -hmm. Sometimes just no sleep at all. Yeah. So with all that you do, it requires so much. Like, are you... Team sleep, team no sleep, we want to know. Team sleep all day. <laughs> team sleep all day, girl. Team Me sleep too. all day. And, because, and that's important, mm -hmm. you know, because you do so much. When do you really get me time? Or what do you do in, in your down period? Sleep. <laughs> I sleep. And you, 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 you say team sleep, and a lot of people might say, you know, that can't be them. But mm -hmm. why is it vital to take a break sometimes for you? Um, just to clear my mental space. If I have so much working on and I don't take a break, it's going to stress me out. And I don't like to be stressed out at all. I like to be as relaxed and calm as I possibly can. It's hard for me. It's challenging. And if I don't get any sleep, it's going to be even harder for me. I mean, there are times where... I involuntarily am team no sleep because I have, you know, deadlines, stuff to make, you know, um, especially like when carnival season was mm -hmm. up and booming, I'd be up three days in a row just making like taking one hour naps in between just making wire bras, making wire bras. So, um, yeah, I just try my best to find a break where I can because it's very important for me to do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So, Ashley, you have been in media and you're very popular and you do very well at it mm -hmm. but you know you're charting new pathways with carpentry and just art mm -hmm. what has it been like or how does it even feel to start these new journeys all right so yes people know me from media but that is just one side of me starting these other hobbies is just the side of me that has been there that people just don't really know about and it's not necessarily a challenge because people like that the persons that follow me on instagram and follow me because of intense they like getting insight into what i like and what mm -hmm. i do on the side and stuff like that so it's not generally anything hard and i get a lot of good feedback from it so mm -hmm. yeah so Ashley is a real hustler, mm -hmm. but what are the two successful habits of a hustler and an entrepreneur? Alright, so for me, I would have to say determination and ambition. Um, if you don't have any ambition, it just, <laughs> <laughs> I just don't know, I don't know, yeah. I don't know what to tell you. Like, yeah. if you don't have ambition, it just, because you always want to see success within yourself right. as an ambitious person. Mm -hmm. Um, determination, I feel like, is an important one as well because no matter what obstacles are thrown at you, you're going to be determined to get what you want to get done. Yeah. Done. You guys, know mm -hmm. I mean, you have goals to achieve, you're determined to achieve them. So I think those are two very important points for me. All right, Ashley, final question. What does from hustle to enterprise mean to you? Um, all right, so from hustle to enterprise, so like you said, I am a hustler. Mm -hmm. I always have, you know, like a side hustle. You don't do your yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm doing it. I'm paying for girl. <laughs> Um, so from hustle to enterprise, it's just taking those hustles and turn it in, turn it, turning it into something more formal of a business. Um, a hustle is, I, can, I, don't, I don't want to consider a hustle a hobby, but a hustle is just a quick way to make money. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not all, that's not always the case when you start a new hustle. When it becomes an enterprise now is when you start um, investing time, investing mm -hmm. money, investing resources in trying to get it or build it up to something that you want to see thrive. Mm -hmm. Um, not just a way to make quick money. So I think that's what From Hustle to Enterprise means to me. All right. Thank you for joining us. Mm -hmm. Creative extraordinaire, Ashley. 
and it was a pleasure interviewing you and just finding out you know how have you been you know going through this wave of the creative industry thank you so much for having me but before we leave you know tell the people that I'm your social media and all and okay. can you know make that extra you know, no. <laughs> gotta make that pay for you guys can follow me on instagram at we love ash m and follow my art page at m by ash m and also subscribe to my youtube channel <laughs> ash m876 Thanks again for tuning in and thanks to Cowork JA for this lovely space and Flirt Boutique for my outfits. Big up to our sponsors Trend Media, Esiram, Flirt and Cowork JA. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channels and to click the links below for our other social media channels. Thanks again, I am Brittany Brown and it's been great. See you for the next episode.